I'm delighted to have Ryan Menzies, the Group Managing Director at Apollo, with me on the Business Spotlight this afternoon. Thank you for joining me, Ryan. Thank you very much, Brenda. Pleased to be here. So um, let's just uh, start off by um, what what is it that you do at Apollo and how long have you been doing it for? So, yeah, my name's Ryan Menzies. I go by Ryan Mingus, the, the, the traditional way. I always oh, try and sorry. get that in there whenever <laughs> I can. <laughs> no, no problem at all. I'm on, an, I'm on a mission to educate the world about the pronunciation of Mingus the proper way. Uh, so I'm, I'm Ryan Mingus. I'm the, the, the founder and managing director of, of Apollo. Uh, we've been in existence now for, for 13 years, and we're a, an engineering services business that's active across the, across the energy spectrum um, in oil and gas uh, offshore and um, but also in uh, onshore activities in areas emerging vectors like uh, energy vectors like hydrogen and industrial decarbonization as well as offshore renewables as well so uh, relatively diverse business and the service that you provide to those industries so it's it's largely desktop engineering that we we do simplistically. We 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 work um, uh, from very early stage, so we get involved in advisory services with our with our clients. Uh, we're quite active in in emerging uh, energy vectors like hydrogen, in in, in particular, in, in in that area, notably, um, where we advise our clients at board level, even in terms of their strategy and their future direction about how they what they can do, what alternate fuels they can look at. Um, how they can decarbonize their business and be more sustainable and relevant for the future. But we also carry projects through through into sort of um, consultancy stage, uh, scoping out and looking at conceptual ideas for them, and then go and engineer that through the through the gears and through the years, as I like to like to coin it. So um, we uh, yeah we're engineering services simplistically. Okay, so you said you said you were a founder um, of Apollo. Um, right. How what led you to start in the business? There was basically um, I, I found found I was one of the founders in the business. There was a number of people that joined fairly fairly quickly after the after the company was ex, uh, established of like minded individuals that spotted an opportunity to do something different in the in the engineering space within um, within the, the energy spectrum. At that point, we were largely involved in in oil and gas, although a lot of my uh, recent background over the last couple of back, uh, decades has been in offshore uh, wind. So we've been active in, in that renewable sphere as well. And we saw an opportunity just to just to provide um, a, a better value of, of engineering service to the marketplace, uh, where things were perhaps maybe getting a little bit over-engineered, just to, just to listen to the client's problems and, and just solve them. It's as simple as that. Uh, but having a like-minded sort of pool of people that were willing to to, to join the business at an early stage just meant that there was an opportunity to do something different and to, to make a make a bit of an impression in the in the, in the space. Fantastic. So that um, like-minded pool of people that started out. How big is your team now? We're around about 120 uh, full-time engineers. Uh, we've we've enjoyed um, fairly sustainable growth to get to the stage that we are are now. So we've really got a um, I always sort of call Apollo a, a small business, but I suppose we're, we're, we're not really too small these days. We've got quite an impressive capability that's multidiscipline uh, across really all of the different flavors of engineering that you that you you get. So, yeah, we've, we've sustainably grown over the 12 years. It's been a bit of a roller coaster, as all businesses are, where, where you're active in the oil and gas world. There's always a cyclical element to it, but mm -hmm. in the renewables world and, and, and other vectors as well, there's, that's not without their, their challenges and then the, the challenges of the last uh, three or four years as well that, that every type of business has had to face has been a, a roller coaster in itself but we we seem to face those challenges and embrace them and um, and come out the other side other side stronger which is uh, which has been fantastic and helped to sustain us and, and get us to the point that we are today so you met, you mentioned the the last the last three years or so um has that that had a big impact on how you've um what, how you run your business? Have you had to make changes because of the the pandemic? Nothing too drastic. I think, like like a lot of businesses in our space, we're we 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 now 
have have, have probably better embraced the, the opportunity to 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 in terms of flexible working and such like but we've always had that element of that as well in our favor was the fact that we are we're a people business um, and we are a lot of the work that we do is sort of desktop engineering. So that can be done wherever. So we've thoroughly embraced that sort of opportunity. And through the through the COVID years, then we've um, we found that there was that I introduced some efficiencies into our business where we where we could be operating much more flexibly. There was a little bit of disruption at points, but actually at times through the COVID years, we actually had some of our some of the um, some of our best performance was it was it was at that time uh, just where we found new ways to embrace technology and to just be a little bit more uh, a bit more efficient, a bit more lean and mean. So it sounds like there's a um, constant review of what you're doing and 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 improvements. Is that is that right? Yeah, absolutely. That's just, that's essential for us. I think as when we set out, it's, it's it's a very busy space. Our space that you don't need to look very far to see competitors. We we compete with a very wide range of businesses now, from the likes of KPMG and Deloitte in that advisory space, through to companies like Worley and and Wood, the big huge um, uh, engineering contractors we even compete with them in a small way but we we certainly give them a run for their money in certain opportunities out it was very much in and around value engineering an opportunity to to offer our clients something's a bit more efficient and just really to where where clients aren't asking for a for a Rolls Royce to be designed where it's maybe just a mini they're looking for then to to offer them that rather than to to to, to do go to overboard so that was in the early in the early days and I think clients are always looking for value so value engineering has always been relevant through what we're what we're doing but these days I think that there's as we've grown then there's bigger opportunity that we've recognized so we've um going through a strategy just now where we're looking to get more involved in that advisory space to swim upstream as I, as I deem that um where we can offer value to our, our clients at that stage and from our point of view the advantage is not just the opportunities at an earlier stage in a project but we can make a good impression and we can leverage that opportunity and follow that opportunity through the through the various stage gates with our clients so we're always looking at how we can expand the range of services that we're doing and how we can operate a little bit more efficiently or effectively and 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 um, that certainly through the through the COVID times it certainly made us lift the bonnet under the business and and and, and look at things and think about what's our opportunity here what more can we be doing better than our competitors fantastic and so you know, you're still here all these these years on so mm. that you must be must be doing it doing it well what well, what would you right, say yeah. Over the over the years that you've been in business, what's been your biggest learning as a business owner? Um, gosh, I mean, there's there's a lot. That's a hard question to 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 answer really in many ways. But there's, there's there's so many different obstacles you come across. But you've really just got to be as a business owner, you've got to be. Uh, keep persevering just to keep keep going at it there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days and you just have to embrace them come what may and I think roll up your sleeves and uh, and just do something the worst thing you can possibly do is is bury your head and and just hope that it's just going to go away because it just doesn't and I've certainly I've certainly learned that when it, when you see a little uh, ember simmering away that oh that, that'll probably go away it won't be a big issue and it just gets bigger and bigger so just address things while you when you see them uh, and address things head on roll your sleeves up as I say and just just get on with it I think that that perseverance and the just just keep going on because uh, tomorrow's another day and all that I'm a, a firm believer in in that and good things will happen brilliant great a great message to anyone uh, coming coming a bit a bit further behind you I, I really like that um did did you always want to be a business owner or did you always want to be an engineer <laughs> I, I love engineering, so so I love being in my position now and seeing some of the great work, work that we do. Um, I think that while my my background is engineering, I did uh, did a master's in, in engineering, then went on to do a PhD. Uh, so I had uh, some skills, I guess, in and around that. Um, but what I realised was that I I 
I'm quite nosy and I, I like being involved in lots of things. And and sometimes in the in the engineering space, you just have to concentrate in the one task and just get that get that done. For me, I, I loved working with you know the power of people, and pulling people together, and, and good things happen. That's a, a big element of our business is the the value that we've the, the values that we have, which are they stand for safe, the acronym safe, uh, but the A in safe is is attitude, having a good people with a good attitude. Then, then, then good things happen, um, and so I think uh, because of that, I kind of got more into sort of in previous um, roles before before type roles and such like, and, and really enjoyed that. Loved the the stresses and strains that comes with it of 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 um, having to try to turn a you know, create a, a positive company performance and 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 create opportunities for people, which which is what happens when you have a growing business and what uh, Apollo's had um, great success in doing. So I think my engineering days are behind me. There's far better people in the company that are far more skilled than me that can they can do some great things in that respect. And I, I love them doing their doing their doing what they do. Fantastic. So the um the, the managing of the business is more more your thing now. Um, I wanted you you mentioned your values there, the the safe yeah. acronym. How how well tell us about those actually and how important that is in in the business. Absolutely vital. I believe that there's you know when we go and see see clients, quite often you get asked you know what's what, what makes you different to company X or whatever, and uh, sometimes that can be a hard hard question to, to, to answer because fundamentally you're offering the same sort of service as what someone else is, but it's really the fact that what, what our values instill, um, the S and SAFE stands for SAFE itself, and it's not just about holding the handrail and acting in a safe and responsible uh, manner. SAFE to us means ensuring we've got safe business practices, there's safe metrics in there to ensure that we don't leverage, leverage ourselves too much financially, so we're sustainable we're safe um the a as i said is for for attitude and a lot of that's about the people having good people with a good attitude that care about their careers but also care about the careers of the people around about them they're not just looking to pull themselves up they're looking to try and pull pe other people up around about them if you have good attitude uh, good people with a good attitude you create the f in safe is for future you do a good job you you care about what you're doing you do a good job and that creates more work, uh, creates a growing business, which creates opportunities and that creates that future. And wrapped all around that is the most important thing for me. You have a healthy, a vibrant culture, a nice climate within your business. It's a place that people want to work. And a big part of that is um, is it has to be enjoyable. You spend a lot of time in your work, um, sometimes more than you, you'd maybe like. And uh, it's uh, but actually, if you can create somewhere where, where 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 people enjoy working as well, then the E stands for enjoyment. That's a, that's a that's a good place to be. And you know, people are naturally going to go that extra mile to make sure that we deliver first class work for our for our clients, and that in turn uh, creates the opportunities for the people within the business. So, yeah, the the the, the culture is a huge piece of of of, of what a policy is and um, it, it attracts the best people to the business so that we do the best work for our clients but it also attracts some fantastic uh, projects into the business as, as well which is obviously critical to to our success and asked into our future success as well I love it um culture is so, so important also um within my my business and action mm -hmm. coaches and organizations so I love I love talking to people that have got this a similar a similar attitude to that um I don't have um I don't have much time for many more questions, but I'd just ask you about the you said that, that those culture um points are attracting um good people into your into your business. Um how how we what are the challenges attracting good people in? Because you know a lot of people are talking about the 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 lack of talent around nowadays. Um tell me about the finding the right people. Yeah. Yeah, the quantity of 
people that are coming into um, sort of engineering or sort of uh, businesses is, is certainly a big problem. There's just not enough people out there, I think, for the for the for the for the current demands, let alone the the future demands. So, um, for Apollo, we've been quite successful in that space. I have to say, we've done really well to attract some great people. We continue to do so in in what is a really tight market. I think that with with good engineers, obviously, they want to get paid well. But actually, for good engineers with a good attitude, then there's a lot more than just the what the, the paycheck at the end of the month. They're looking for that opportunity, the opportunity to be able to transition their skills. They might come from an oil and gas back ground for example but look to transition into other energy vectors that's something that Apollo can can offer because the working in in, in other areas be it offshore renewables or onshore decarbonization or hydrogen or such like a lot of skills are really really transferable process engineering for example so it, it's still a big concern the 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 the, the, the sort of the, the the talent attraction but for Apollo we keep working on the culture that's my my key job as I see it is really to try and preserve that culture Culture as we keep growing because my, my targets to 13 threes are our three-year business plan to get to 30 million within three years uh, which is roughly doubling our business from where we are uh, so obviously we're going to need a lot more good people into the business but with the positive culture that we've got then I think we can attract that also we need to do our bit to attract more people into engineering and I spend a good amount of my time going into particularly targeting primary schools to attract young people into engineering and really promoting STEM and the excitement that engineering can can be as a career for for these young people and opening their eyes to that. Fantastic. Having come from science myself, um, I think that's really important and a mother of uh, of teenagers. So I'm yes. yeah, really, really pleased to hear it. So what are the um, what does the future look like for Apollo? I think the future is rosy. I think there's not going to be without its challenges. The the the, the background is uh, is um, complex just now. There's the, the you don't need to look too far to to unearth bad news stories or concerns about the economy and uh, as you say, skill shortages and all and, and such like. But we all need energy, and that energy uh, mix is transitioning. But there'll always be a mix there, and that mix will change with with time. So I think that a company like Apollo is highly relevant because we're doing that advisory piece where we're trying to work out what that future energy mix will look like but we're also actually engineering it and 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 and, 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 and working out uh, answers to really complex problems now so as i say we're around about 50 million in scale now 120 people we can flex up with depending on projects that are ongoing but our business um, target for the next three years is is 30 and 3 we believe that we can double over the next three years in the continued sort of um organic um, uh, way that we've been doing so um, staying true to our values uh, and um, the key key part within all of that is is not uh, for me it's not um, where can we find the people or where can we find the work to, to to sustain that it's it's make sure and how do we maintain our culture as part of all that it keeps coming back to that every time for me but uh, I see growth we need to keep growing we need to keep creating opportunities for the great people in the business that's uh, that's what I've promised them all uh, and that's what I'll deliver on. Fantastic well yeah good luck with it and um, I'll be following with yeah following with uh, with admiration I think to the the success that you're you're going to half. Um, if anybody wants to find out more about Apollo or um, reach out to you, um, where where do they find you? Absolutely, I always love speaking to to, to people, whatever they whatever they might be looking for. As I say, I've had a few contacts from from from, from schools recently where they were looking for for Apollo to come in and and uh, support the the promotion of, of STEM, for example. But they can find me on on LinkedIn. Uh, if they go to uh, our website Apollo.engineer, then uh, in the contact us, you can you can reach me there. Um, and I'm uh, I think my profile's on the in the about uh, section of Apollo as well. So. I'm uh, I should be easy to track down. Fantastic. Um thank you so much. Um Dr. Ryan Mingus for being <laughs> with me on uh, on the business spotlight. That I've really enjoyed talking to you. Um Ryan, thank you so much for uh, taking the time. My pleasure, Brenda. It was lovely to speak to you.